Tom. Motion the board accept the attached budget guidance to the general manager for fiscal year 2016-17 background. The OPA board of directors has received input from the budget and finance advisory committee and the treasurer drafted a document after the September 24th board meeting, which was to be used to create facilitate input from board members. The attached document is the result of the input from the board members who responded. Since the last board meeting, input to the document has caused suggestion that the board assess the possibility of using the casino dollars for bridge repairs to be eliminated, as has the suggested 3% of salary level uh, to cover costs of raises to be eliminated. Uh, effectively, motion it provides the GM budget guidance from the board for fiscal year 2016-17. Just to reference the two suggestions that come in, uh, the suggestion of evaluating uh, whether or not to use the casino money for bridge repairs uh, was not inserted into the document due to communications that went on between the board, although it was not an official vote. It was my call as the drafter of the document to say we would remove that. It would not be added, excuse me. Uh, and that based on the same thing, the input that was going back and forth amongst the board, uh, the sec section on uh, suggesting a 3% pool of money for salary increases uh, has, was in fact removed from the document. So what we have is the original draft uh, without casino suggestion, but the 3% was removed. Um, that's my motion. Second. Discussion? Oh, I'd like to make a motion to table this, uh, this motion. Uh, I believe that there are sufficient uh, numbers of discussion topics points uh, that in order to do it properly, we should have a, uh, we should do this in a special open meeting. Um, I believe that uh, this has already been suggested by four by direct columns. Uh, we can proceed, but I, uh, I believe that in fact this deserves a lot more time uh, than exchanging emails back and forth and a discussion here. Yeah, and for the for the um, the sake of brevity and. and, and uh, I, my first year on the board, Tom Terry was the president, and he created a, a uh, working meeting uh, whereby the agenda was uh, limited to one or two topics, and I found it to be very useful to me as, as a board member, and I thought very useful to the community in terms of openly, um, uh, openly discussing Various topics as they were associated with those, uh, with that limited uh, uh, agenda. And um, Mr. President, point, point of order: Is there a second for the motion? That we made? Uh, I'll second the motion. Now you can have discussion. Yeah, and as as a um, and also as an uh, additional point um, that we suspended parliamentary procedure, which which uh, enhanced the ebb and flow between. Uh, individuals who were in the audience attending uh, the, those work sessions and uh, it creating a pretty good back and forth. So, you know, if, if we are discussing the possibility of tabling um, your, your motion, Tom, and um, uh, perhaps having a special session, you know, I'm, I'm thinking or you know, I'm recommending that it be a work session um, so that uh, we can... Uh, Really get a feel for how people have, or we get a feel for what people are thinking in terms of this, this GM or guidance. Bill, I was part of those work sessions, and I thought that they were a thorough waste of our time. There was no motions made. There was no votes taken during those closed sessions. So how can we do something to go to a motion in the close in in the a 
a work session. We stopped them because the premise was good to start with the start with those to try to lessen the debate at these meetings here. They didn't work. We had the two hours, three hours over there, and then we came over here and had the same exact discussions, the same two, three hour discussions over here. So they really didn't work. Work. That's why we stopped them. You know, we did them two years ago. Well, I never heard a word last year about these work sessions. Now all of a sudden, I'm hearing about these work sessions again. But again, they were just a, a you know a place for you know it was just people talking. And then we come over here and we do the same exact. Uh, so I can't remember one one thing that I got out of those work sessions, work sessions other than another meeting. So if you're talking about one of those work sessions for this, I mean, we're in an open meeting now. Let's discuss this guidance. How long can we wait? He didn't get the guidance last year until December 3rd. The budget was done basically by by that point. It, it's almost you know it's probably 80, 80 85 percent done now. We're we're so far down the road. This might be an effort in futility. Uh, I have. No, sure, I think we have completely lost track of what Tom's uh, document. Uh, and motion is all about. It is simply to put before the board the, advi the BNF advisory committee's suggestions to the general manager when he's preparing the budget. And I think that's all we need to vote on. Anybody, any board member that wants to provide additional input into building the budget has every right to do so and should do so. This is simply for us to accept what they have sent us. Thank you very much. Vote yes, no. Yeah, the document goes, it does include some of the things from the budget finance committee. But this process was put in place. Uh, actually, I think the first year it was done was when, uh, I think it was actually Dave Stevens was the president there. Uh, it's a process we followed every year since where there is a drafting of a general guideline from the board of directors to the general manager with topics at a high level which suggest kind of their interests things they're really concerned about that include budget and finance committee information and on september 24th this board of directors agreed to the process that was proposed that we would use the existing draft document and that written suggestions for change in language would be submitted uh, to that document. So this process started on September, actually before September 24th because the actual draft document was handed out well in advance of that meeting. It was early September that I prevented, presented the initial draft. The, the changes to the draft at this point have been uh, not including one suggestion and removing the three uh, percent other suggestions have been talked about uh, at this point ladies and gentlemen we either vote for this thing or don't bother to do it at all because it wasn't done six seven years ago it's not something that would have been part of the history of the community of the community forever uh, if we chose if we choose to vote for tabling this again uh, then let's just not even bother to do it because at that point it really becomes this is becoming a silly process we're not following what we agreed to do in September the document was done well in advance of when it needed to be done to give it to the general manager and if we don't vote for this thing up or down today uh, I think we must well just skip it and not even bother to do it so that's my input on the motion to table this I just uh, would point out that the document itself, I'd rather go down it individually, item by item, and where this credit is not exactly my intent. Um, in fact, I sent at least three emails regarding the budget guidance. And, uh, you know, there are points I feel very strongly about. And, um, and you know, they haven't been addressed in there. Your budget, your emails to me, sir, were after the deadline. Therefore, the draft was what the draft was. I, I okay. See. You wanted to bring up those issues. You had every right to wow. do so and submit them when we started another round 
of impact. What we don't need is political speeches on what ought to be done or not done in a budget guidance document. Draft sample language and submit it for changes, which is what some of the people did. Okay? Well, That's what we agreed to do in September. If you didn't do it, you please call the question on whether we're going to vote on this today or not. All right. Now, the question is the first motion, it was your motion, it was no, to the first motion is first motion table. To table. Okay. All right. Uh, any more discussion on tabling it? I'll withdraw that motion. You withdraw a motion? Actually, you can't withdraw the motion because it's been seconded. Actually, you don't second the motion to table, but I'm not going to read the exactly. wrong to you. <laughs> you want to remove it? Remove it. I'll let you. Okay. That's exactly. Right. Just going to remove it. So now we're going to vote on the document. All those in favor? No, we're not. What? It's we are not, not going to vote My on the My motion has been made and seconded. His motion has been made and seconded. Okay, okay. There, there, was was discussion. there was discussion. There was discussion. We did table. have discussion. No, that was on the table. All right, discussion. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you kidding? You're missing the. Go ahead. Waste time. Go ahead, Bill. Excuse me. Mr. President, uh, one of the points in here uh, was on the employee raises. And I think some were, some of the responses I saw had to do with an HR study that they would vote for. Uh, excluding the raises pending an HR study, but to my knowledge, there is no HR study being done. So, you know, I, I don't know why we we would ex exclude uh, the raises from the guidance. Now, you know, it's just a guidance. It's just a, a guideline, a, a suggestion, but, you know, I don't know why would we why we would exclude those, especially if some were under the assumption that we were doing a HR study before, uh, uh, you know, putting these into the budget. Now, you know, the general manager can, can put them in. We can, you know, like I said, this is just a suggestion. We have the budget process to take care of this situation one way or the other. And, you know, the, I would have thought that there, if there was a problem with our finances, that uh, the Budget and Finance Committee saw that they would have made the rec recommendation to exclude any raises, to cut it down to 1% uh, or 2% or 3%, but their budget guidance was to the general manager to uh, include up to 3%. And that's not 3% for everybody. That's a cumulative cumulative uh, 3%, you know, over the whole... Uh, the bill, to be specific, the suggestion from the Budget and Finance Committee was to do a study the salary structure. Right. Uh, they did not reference one way or another the 3%. They didn't object to what we've done in the past. Right. Just to be clear. Any more discussion? Yes. You had discussion? David? Yes. yes Go ahead. Where is your hand? Come you here. Well, you know, there it's raised. The suggestions that I made uh, were three of them, and which came in too late. And they weren't apparently in the right form, uh, although apparently other changes have been made since then. Nonetheless, uh, uh, I felt that these things required a discussion. And I think the reported discussion prior to, as per Jack's suggestion, we getting to this board meeting, but here we are. Okay, the first one is that we remove, uh, as with respect to placeholders in the replacement reserve, uh, we had two placeholders, actually three. Uh, the one moved along far enough so that it's not placeholder. The, uh, and my suggestion is to remove the existing placeholders, the existing two, which are specifically the police station and the, uh, and the White Horse Park bed. bed. And I'm defining placeholder, my definition, as a project that has not been fully specified budget or approved by the board. Now, does this impact the budget in the assessment anyway? No, it doesn't. Because in 
each case has uh, the placeholders that I'm referring to now and others in the past are placeholders that quote are funded by the historical reserve. So if you look at the historical reserve right now, current budget, which was passed, although we discussed the fact during the budget hearing very clearly that those were not approved by the project, but nonetheless, it's in this budget. It is in this budget. It is in, they are in the list of capital items. They're in the list of capital items that appear in the budget. And those capital items are part of the list that, when added up, amounts to $1.675 million, with some $635,000 of those of that million are, uh, are not approved projects. They're not real projects. There's no design behind them. There's no, there's nobody ever approved it. And there were some specific arguments against them. Now, placeholders. they're placeholders. They're in the budget. And does it matter? Well, in a way, yes, in a way, no. Um, there was no immediate impact assessment because the money, that $1.675 uh, is coming out of the, is being shown as a transfer to operation, uh, to operate from the historical reserve. It's shown on this paper, which is part of our budget book, is reducing the historical reserve by $635,000. That is extremely misleading because you're talking about what are fundamentally it's fantasy, uh, fan fantasy budgeting. These aren't real projects. They can't be real projects because they haven't been approved and they haven't really even been properly posted or anything. Now, Dave, can I respond to that to the conversation you and I have already had? We had it at the last board meeting, where I absolutely agreed with the idea that the amount of engineering dollars that would be needed to start a project, assess a project, is something that could be put in as a placeholder for a project rather than the overall large dollar amount. Uh, but what you cannot do is say you can't put it in the budget if the board hasn't already approved it. Because what you're talking about then is we do the budget once a year. So you're talking about having to spend at least 18 months, if not 24 months, to get something approved by the board to be put into a future budget. So your, con so your context of saying the board has to have already approved a project before it's put into the budget, time-wise, just doesn't work. Now, if the argument is that you don't want the fully, the 500000 put into the budget, because there's really no real solid dollars behind that, but there may need to be $50,000 worth of engineering reports. If the context is to say a placeholder can be put in for the amount of money that actually might be expended next year towards, towards a project, but to say that the overall project has to be voted on and approved by the board before it can be put in the budget just doesn't functionally work. But if you want to say that the amount of money that suggested that Bob would put into the budget would be only the engineering dollars and the what would actually be spent that particular year, you and I have already agreed on that. So I have no problem with that. I just never received any language to change this document to reflect that. So I, we've already physically just told him that right here. I think there are two, two issues. I think you're right, Tom, in the sense that I mean, I certainly agree that engineering studies uh, can uh, put in the budget. And, uh, and that in general, it's the proper way to do it. In other words, have as a defined project, which is back an engineering study. And that certainly qualifies. No capital expenses 
are uh, involved. Uh, and and that is kind of to the point, too. I mean, there's a good or no question as to whether or not take spend these capital dollars on, on simply pre-engineering uh, studies. I could argue it either way. I might, I might yeah, the reality is you want to be able to capitalize the expense of any capital project. You don't necessarily have operational dollars. I don't and my, and my point is that it's not a capital project until you've done it. Well, yeah, it's a matter of how you want to. I'm, I'm not accountable by any stretch of imagination. But on number one, as you've raised here, I believe we have, in fact, a level of agreement of what the guidance would be. And you and it has just now been provided. I can add it to the document so that it's added. And I'll be more than happy to do that. But I think we can come to a to a resolution without any more debate All on right. this particular thing. If, okay. If if you believe that's true and we can come up with a language which is specific budget guidance, it's basically say take out to put in, don't put in any more. Now if you come up with a, a study project or something like that, different story. It's not the same thing. Good. All right. I'll go on. Oh. You have more? Yeah, no, I well, let me let me for sure. Okay, I believe that at our last budget uh, hearings, we had agreed uh, to that our intent to change the name of the five-year plan to the legacy reserve. We went all over that, and there were arguments uh, and discussions about that. That I believe we agreed we were going to zero the legacy reserve after the one million. $98,000 transfer in 2016-17. In other words, we had one more year to go. Now, it turns out there's another 45000 and I, I propose to do what we did in other cases and simply zero that out or remove that as a column in our, in our whole future budgets. That's what I'm saying. And I, I think that was the intent of what we did in, during last year's budget. I, I, I I'm, I'm, can't argue one way or another on that. And why that has to be in a budget guidance document? Well, I think well, that's it's certainly it. that's something we can certainly do as a board to decide. What all again? You're, you're raising an issue that I'm not sure that needs to be in a budget. Well, guidance. well, if 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 we but in a high level budget, budget the reason budget. is it's in a it's in a high level budget. It certainly is a high level budget. It's as high as you get. When you're talking about taking a subcategory of a reserve, replacement reserve category that, that's documented by board resolution. If you take, and by the way, that subcategory is not documented by board resolution. What I'm saying is, it's what we intend, it's what we intend, it's what we do. And uh, it certainly doesn't occur guidance to tell Bob. When you come back in there, what we want to see in that re replacement reserve category, what we want to see is we want to see million dollars coming in. We want to see a transfer from historical reserve to take care of change that's left over. And we want to see that column zero at the I have zero at the bottom. And and disappear the following year. Okay. I don't, I don't, any more discussion on that? That's fine. Go ahead, Bill. I think before we put that in guidance, as we're telling the general manager what to do with this, I think we need counsel from the auditor, our control controller, and the general manager before we do before we put that into his guidance. I think there there may be some problems with doing with doing that, and I'd like to know all the ins and outs before we. You know, put that into the budget guidance. Well, I don't, certainly don't blame you for asking that question. I can't swear that I know all of the ins and outs either, but I, although I, I don't see any issues. We did it before, yeah, last year. Yeah, we, we have, well, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it we can go back in the history. Let me suggest that, we, that, that I think Bill's comment right there. I mean, number one, we got a resolution. And number two, doesn't be in the budget guidance. We can work this issue offline. Uh, when we're actually doing the budget, folks. I mean, the, the, because we really don't know 
what the impact would be of us saying this. We really don't know. And I think it's a very good point. So I would, quite frankly, argue against the number two issue. Not that we won't end up doing it, but to get it into a budget guidance, just since we don't really know the impact of it, and we're sitting here in the middle of November, uh, we need to get this thing done or we don't. Well, I mean, know where I am. You know, and, and I if, think if we had a very had, good issue. If we had had this, if we had had this issue, uh, we, uh, prior to this, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, we wouldn't be talking about that. That's also true. This document yeah. was put into your hands in the first or second week of September. Reading by, yes, and that's when we should have had the meeting. We right. needed to discuss it. And that's what Jan yeah, Jack Let's keep going. Said. What's number three? Okay, let me point out, I haven't left that, uh, that in your document under capital budget, you say the 2016-17 budget should continue with the capital fund provided to support major capital repairs, enhancements, or replacement of existing assets, as well as provide the repair and replacement of general assets. That sentence basically says, and I feel, as I read it, it's ignoring what we agreed to last year with respect to the five-year plan slash legacy reserve. We had agreed that we were going to use the fund, final money, zero it out through that contribution, and then stop it. That sentence does not reference where the money comes from at all. It says, the fiscal year 2016-7 budget should continue the capital funding provided to support major capital repairs, enhancements, or replacement of existing major assets, as well as provide for repair and for replacement of smaller general assets. It is a boilerplate sentence, which simply says, make sure your budget includes capital needs of the organization, because last year's capital budget we got didn't have capital dollars in it. And that we had to add them ourselves. That's placeholders, isn't it, Doc? And that's a it had, well, when it had, it had some, but in general, we didn't have, we had to add a lot of stuff ourselves. At the but end of the process, you had some, yeah. but this is a boilerplate sentence which simply says, "Take care of the capital needs in your budget." But which can I think can be read to say, "Continue what we were doing," and that's that's and my that problem with it. So, all right, I'll go on to the third one. Again, these are my objections. That was the third. That was the third. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. I went back. No. Can I, can I read my own? I'm making notes. It's placeholder yeah, it was, was number up. one, zero out, and then that sentence was number two. Well, that sentence referred to zero out. Oh. I mean, that, that's uh, that's what you're talking you about. Go on, go on, you're on. Go on, go on. We got a deadline. Hey. I'm with you. Well, clarify the responsibility for the CIP through a formal board motion rather than embedding in the budget guidance and GM objectives. Here again, we had a arbitrary change to what, and this, by the way, was a vote done. And uh, as recently as the last closed board meeting, I had a confirmation that, in fact, I asked the question, who's running the CIP? Am I still running? We have a board vote on it. Never have a board vote on it. So I can ask the question now. Now, does that what does that got to do with here? Um, it says in here that using the preceding previous capital plan structures, budget should clearly provide the format and mechanism which will be utilized to obtain provide the needed reserves for the 16, 17, as well as longer name. Uh, term needs of the association based on a capital updated capital improvement plan and the reserve study currently underway. Now, what I want to know in this budget guidance, uh, or relevant to this budget guidance, is anything happening on that? I mean, do you want or should we have a formal motion that says disestablish or, or basically fire me to say I'm no longer responsible for the CFP? Now, Mr. Renaud, the chairman has already said so much in the, in the papers. So uh, I just want a confirmation. And then I believe, in looking at this, that the uh, that there are, is this guidance is highly problematic with respect to that. Let me 
So I have a question. The document itself simply references an updated capital improvement. It doesn't say who's doing it. No, but I mean, if you're going to get a big... All my point is that this document, we're discussing the content of the document, not the dynamics of how the plan gets done. It says to the general manager, pay attention to an, an updated capital improvement plan. It doesn't say done by so-and-so or not. It simply says pay attention to it. That's all this document says. That is, your issue is valid on another topic as to who's actually doing the work. But as far as this document is concerned, it simply says use them for an updated capital improvement plan as part of your basis for your discussion. Yeah, well, I, under, I understand that, and I, rest, I wrestled with it, Tom, but on the other you know, this guidance is predicated on the fact that that's being done. <laughs> and if we, we don't discuss how it's being done or who's going to do it, then I think the document itself is on the mouth the guidance itself. Is. All right, that's my point. I'm not going to. Uh, let me just point out a needs document. Uh, IT. I mean, there's IT all over the place. Um, and all I would point out here, and what I would put, is that the budget must, it says here, must be based on a specific IT improvement plan, which may cover multiple fiscal years for implementation. So that's the budget. This is the budget guidance. And you already talked somewhere in here about capitalism. It's kind of mandatory to say that everything. But in this particular case, though, I believe that we should, the guidance should make Fluency that a needs document shall accompany the GM budget, uh, a needs being an IT needs document, for submission uh, for approval to the board. In other words, you know, if there's any IT in this budget, it should be accompanied with a requirements document or a needs document. Justification. Uh, which is basically a justification uh, for. And I, okay, so I would so again, we're here to adjust the document. The budget must be based on a specific IT improvement plan to include a needs document, which may cover multiple fiscal years for full implementation. I have no problem inserting the words to include a needs document. Also, yep. justification of those needs. Yeah, isn't that what isn't that what a needs document does? Not necessarily. Just not necessarily. It, it needs Give document. Me an needs document can be generated by anybody. Let me uh, let me address Tom. Uh, I don't want to belabor this. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. I did respond on a timely basis, and I, I want to know if um, my points are in your document in some other form or format. Because you kind of know I'm kind of the street. Uh, assessment should not be raised. There should be a concrete and a concerted effort to reduce expenditures where there are uh, identified inefficiencies and unneeded funds. Is that is that in the guidance document? Is that? Mm -hmm. No, it's the nature of doing a good budget. It, 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 it goes into the, it, 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 it's, 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 it's what you need to do. I, I, I say, I, I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't it be uh, pointed out that assessment should not be raised or should be a concerted effort to reduce expenditure. But the, I mean, it, 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 isn't that a guidance? Well, I respond to that, Jack. The, the only time this, board, the, this community has ever lowered its dues, ever, mm -hmm. was a year that we provided a budget guidance. There was nothing in that budget guidance that said you can't raise the dues, you have to lower the dues. There was nothing like that in that guidance thing. But we ended up voting lowering the dues the only time in the history of the organization. Correct. So to me, that goes into the nature of doing a budget and but, business plans that says you're going to cut out unneeded costs wherever possible. Well, it's part of the nature of doing it. Roger, Tom. But uh, it, it, if you fast forward uh, an additional year, we've raised them. We've raised uh, the assessments by $26. And by the way, you, you, you know, I think you did a yeoman job, and, and, and I think thank Jeff Nepper for raising that topic during that, that budget process. Um, it, 
everybody says, oh, it was only $5. No, it wasn't. No, there it was wasn't. a proposed increase of $30 on top of current assessments, and we, we eliminated the $30, and we lowered the, um, the assessments by 5 or 6 bucks, whatever it actually was. So I think that was we did a good job. And all I'm saying is, should there be um, should there be a reference to assessments not being raised? That's that's all I'm saying. I I, I need to see a proper guidance to the GM. GM comes back to us and said impossible. Can't find any uh, uh, inefficiencies. Um, can't find any unneeded funds. Need to know that. Um, my other point was Jack, Jack yes, before you go on to your next point, uh -huh. does the second paragraph under operating budget, the language that's in there, does that sort of uh, address what you just said? Well, help me out, ma'am. Uh, uh, are under, we in the overview? Under operating budget, general second, focus, second paragraph, okay, uh, where it says the Operational, oh Lord. Operational budget. Operational budget. Operational budget. Zero <laughs> based budget approach, which was, yeah. yeah. And that was a concept that, that, and, that, and that and I had never used and, and it goes on to if say, right, or to budget. be lower okay. based on a thorough assessment of these organizations. So okay. I think that does address what you're uh, saying, doesn't it? Okay. I, it does. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. And, and so thank you, Tom. That is there. Now, next one, uh, my next point is. Um, Budget four, and to begin the process of hiring a consulting firm to study and propose a structure of our information technology systems to include <coughs> um, identify our hardware and software needs, our training and skill set development, determine the timeline required for installation and implementation, and determine the overall cost of the project. Should that be in there? Okay, yeah, can, can you point that out talking. to me? Well, we've already talked about it. Just quick. added to it. To include a needs and okay. justification document, because it's in there. For, I roger that. It's there. I roger that. Fund two, I'm trying to be specific here. Fund two bridge bridge repair replacements in the 1617 fiscal budget, project to be completed within the coming fiscal year. Is that it? No, not this year. This year, yeah, that works in this year's budget. Oh, we're not going to. The bridge work is in this year's budget. Okay, well, so should, we shouldn't, shouldn't, this shouldn't, year. there, shouldn't there be something in 1617? Because obviously we're not, or maybe I'm wrong. You may be wrong. We, according yeah, to maybe talk, we can get it done this year. Line, this is going to be done this fiscal year. Yeah. Okay, you're talking about the repairs. I'm talking about the repair and or replacement. Yeah, and or, that, that's this year. That's this year's budget. Yeah, if we go repair. It's in the budget. It's in the budget, so yeah, that's why it's not in the budget. It's in this year. By the way, it is not exactly in this year's budget. The $175,000 it, it, is not enough money. It's in this year's budget, but we've already been told it's just on $500,000. each. So, the what, point what, of order again, this document yeah. is about next year's budget. Not this and year. the assumption is that the work will be done, whether we had enough money in the budget to cover it or not this particular year. It's a wholly different topic. Um, so well, no, 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 because I think you and I had discussed in the past, and you have brought up wisely, I, I, I might add, that we may underfund a project within any given fiscal year or fund a project uh, correctly within a fiscal year, but that project not be completed. How do we fund it in the, well, in the coming year? Let me give you, uh, Jack, a reason I'm smiling and laughing is... That's the whole reason I brought up the I know that. over project. I, I know that. And, 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 and I say this in jest, but I say it in seriousness. When you have both Dave Stevens and Pete Gomzak telling you you have a bad idea for the carryover dollars, then you back off uh, on I'm, the I'm idea. Not, I'm, Which I'm is not, why I back off. No, no, I'm not talking about carryover. I'm not over. talking about carryover. Well, this I, is carryover. I, well, it's no. exactly what you're talking about is... If we underfunded something and the work still needs to if, be done, if the if the budget do? if the budget this year is for a hundred and seventy five thousand dollar repair, it would be wise for us to direct the general manager uh, through this guidance to prepare for the uh, replacement 
or repair of bridges in the 16, 17. It's budget. already in the budget for this year. It's just under budget. So I see no reason. And about that, that. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Tom on that, Jack. I mean, this point I've been trying to, trying to make is make that sense. we have money in the historic reserve. If we under, it's 175, <laughs> this is what we nominally call it, and it really is a half a million. Then we just take a half a million out of the historic reserve and fund with it. No, it's no, not no. like we don't have it. <laughs> we have plenty. Um. Develop plans and specifications for runway bathrooms and cosmetic upgrades at the beach club. I think you did mention the beach club as a potential. Thank you very much. Before capital expenditures are budgeted, primarily uh, primary plans and specifications, including preliminary engineering costs, must be generated. And I, I guess that is addressed by your conversation with Dave vis-a-vis -vis a engineering study on any given project. Uh, putting monies aside in, in, in order to do that study. That's fine. Um, I have just one more thing. I'm sorry for it, but bridges. No, I'm not bridges. Um, bulkheads. I think there is an issue. I think, uh, I don't know that it's included in this, this, this budget guidance, but at a certain point, it's going to be put up and, uh, again. And that's the question, is when we go through an entire cycle of doing bridges, they're about to restart. I mean, what is the, do we do what I want, I'll call a true up for lack of a better term. I mean, do we in fact look and see, okay, how much repair is needed next? What do we have to do next? I mean, do we have an engineering study? Now, I'm, I didn't get into the, the business on the, the order or what they said. So I'm not addressing that. But in general, you know, when you we're getting the fixed amount of money in from the bulkhead owners, and <laughs> presumably a, a fixed amount from the OP, uh, the rest of the the uh, members for the non-private common uh, grants. Uh, yeah, the common grants. No. So we're getting the fixed amount of money getting spent fix the bulkheads to get towards the end of the cycle. Now the question is, is there a true up at the end? Have we spent too much money and or have we spent not as much as we thought we were going to spend? I mean is is there a report that balances that? I don't know, Bob, you're looking but I don't know. No, there's not gonna be a report unless I'm directed to do one because I don't know of an initial starting point that said here's how you're gonna do it. Each year it's been uh, Look at what the needs were. It was a 20 or 25 year plan that, that was set in place long before I was in this chair. And and we're coming to the end of that. Yeah. To your point, it's going to need to be reevaluated. I've spoken to it. I've spoken to that uh, several times in, in previous months uh, that the board's going to have to decide how they want to address once the bulkhead work's complete, how they want to start the next cycle, whatever that may be. Uh, we're about a year and a half away from having the need to start that, to have that process uh, rolled out. But it is something that we we recognize, we're aware of, and it will be addressed. Yeah, that's that's something I think this board should should look into. I mean, it may be that you know it's not premature, even if it's a year and a half away, to to look at exactly how that evaluation made is going to be made. And, Okay, but I, I'm, I'm not sure that that's in this concept of this guy. Well, I mean, it, it, it could just ask the, for it direction. Could. He just asked for direction, Bill. I did. The yeah. discussion the is about the budget guidance. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and, the, and the question is whether or not in the budget the, the, the amount of money that we're collecting is, and the amount of money that we have is, in fact, the right amount of money. And that will be the question. I think this question is being asked by budget science. Okay. Anyway, I just bring that up as a point. I'm not going to. Uh, okay. Is there any yeah. discussion? I'm sorry. Well, hang on. Let me just read some language here having to do with the number one. And this would be for insertion into the document so maybe we can actually vote on this thing. Uh, the board requests the budget include only the actual funding needed to support evaluative studies and work done to support future proposals for a full project 
Board, board requests the budget on, include only the actual funding needed to support evaluative studies and work done to support future proposals for a full project approval. In other words, the assumption isn't that the project has been approved, but there does need to be dollars in a budget where Bob can put into the budget that I need $50,000 to start the engineering studies, to start the work on projects that will be later presented for full approval by the board. Is that okay? Yeah, that, that's okay. Uh, where are you going to put it in the... I guess because there's an open question as to whether or not it's capital or it's uh, Yeah, I, again, I'll, I'll just simply put it in there that he he could put it in there as operational dollars or capital dollars. That's another issue to discuss later. But as far as this document goes, I'll insert that sentence, which takes care of that. Okay? Excuse me, Mr. President. Yes. And then when it comes time to do the project, we're going to hear this, oh, the rest of that's out of the budget. We're just going to do those plans this year because that's all that's in this budget. Just like the bathrooms at the White Horse Park. We may get to those this year, but if we had last year's budget, we only put in there a little bit of money to do the study, then we're going to hear that, oh, we can't do that. That's out of budget. you got to wait for next year's budget. We'll never get anything done. Not never. Bill, if I may. Not Dave, I've been here for 17 years. I've been watching things just don't get done because, of, you know, let's let's have a study about this. Let's have a, a referendum about this. Let's have. We can get nothing done. Do the study. Okay. Now, and by the way, I have a perfect example um, the bridges. I mean, $175,000, <laughs> and what we have is these referendum. Uh, inspections about his state. Okay, so we missed it by about three. Exactly. If, in fact, if we're talking about a replacement item, and that's, I think, 90% of what we're talking about, would you agree on replacement? If you're talking about funding something for a replacement, and you have the study in place, and you do the study, and then the study says, okay, spend this money and do this, and you should do it right away. Or we think we should do it. That money is available in the historical reserve. It can be taken out and spent right then and there. Totally and agree with tomorrow. you. Totally agree with you. But it's just not how we do it around here. Well, you, you yeah. got the it's out of budget, so you can't spend it. Good group, yeah. And that's who we listen to. If, if you tell me that I'm going to be able to go out there and, and tell people, well, guess what? The study told us to spend that money. They're going to say, well, is that study paying assessment? I so is that study paying my assessment? Well, you'd be surprised. I, I agree with what you're saying. Definitely. And I'm trying my hardest to stop it, to change it, so that, in fact, we realize what the what the reserves are and what we can spend them for. Right. right. Let me suggest that this language that I described the city does what has been discussed, but it is a guidance. And let's assume there is a project that the full study hasn't been done yet, but it does in fact need to be done during 2016-17. There is nothing that says he can't come forward with a budget for that particular project and for and, and with an explanation of why that it says I need this much money to study it, but depending on what the board wants to do, it can either put money in for what we think it's going to cost, or it can choose not to put it in. What, where's your language? That, that's what this language basically says. It, it, it gives him, there's nothing that stops Bob from coming forward with saying, hey folks, this is a project that absolutely has to be done. All the research isn't done yet. And it's up to you whether you want to put it in the budget or not. If you don't want to put any money in the budget, then we'll end up being attacked for spending money that wasn't in the budget. Or we can put money in there, which was our best reasonable assumption of what it would be. We, as a board, can ex can decide to put that money in or not. It's up to us. But this guidance simply says, this is what we request you do. And if he decides to come back with something different, that's up to him. And he can do that with reasonings behind it. I think we're, I think we're done, as far as I'm concerned. All the questions? Yeah, I mean, with, with, with these question. with these two changes to the document, uh, with 
with the amended document, two changes that were mentioned. I'd like to have a, a vote or uh, agree with that and signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. We have to move along here because we only got 20 minutes. Any new business? <clears throat> I've got something that's going to take about 25, 30 minutes. Well, it's punching the rail. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, uh, I moved the table, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, right. That's good. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you have right. no, 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 no. 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 any, any, any pending actions? Okay, appointments. Uh, we have four appointments, actually. Only two that are on the agenda, but they, uh, we did have them. One is uh, D. Dale Lynch, the first term for clubs. Uh, the second is James Mike Evans, first term for Comprehensive Plan. The third is Bob O'Malley for a second term for Racket Sports. And uh, Doug Parks for the chairman of Bylaws and Resolution. Move to accept all. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any media questions? Joe sitting there. Josh, any? First time, anyway. I think so. Move to adjourn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a motion out. to adjourn into closed session. Right. Thank you. For the purpose of discussion, uh, record sandpiper contract negotiation. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.